Hello everyone, and welcome back to our series on algorithms. In the last video, we introduced the notion of greedy algorithms and how they can be used to find optimal solutions to various problems. In this video, we will discuss how these methods can be applied to solve problems involving mathematical objects known as matroids. If you enjoyed this lecture, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. With that, let's begin. Matrix can be thought of as a generalization of the notion of linear independence in vector spaces. A matroid consists of a tuple of sets. The first element is a finite set U, known as the universe, and the second element is a set of subsets of U denoted as F. The elements of F are referred to as independent sets. For this tuple to constitute a matroid, it must satisfy the following three properties. The first is that the empty set is an F. This means that F is always non-empty. The second is that any subset of an independent set in F is also an F. This is often referred to as the hereditary axiom. Lastly, we have that for any two independent sets, I and J and F, if the size of I is greater than the size of J, then there exists some element in J which can be added to I and produce an independent set. This is referred to as the exchange axiom. We also define the basis B of a matroid as a maximal independent set in F, such that B is not a proper subset of any other independent set in F. If you've ever taken a linear algebra course, you might be familiar with the concept of a basis of vectors. As it turns out, this is closely related to the notion of a basis for matroids. In particular, suppose you define U to be a finite set of vectors and let F consist of all possible sets of linearly independent vectors. In this case, a basis for this matroid is simply given by a maximal set of linearly independent vectors, meaning that if we add any other vectors to the set, the vectors are no longer linearly independent. Hence, we have that this basis spans the entire finite set of vectors in U, just as a basis of vectors in linear algebra spans a given vector space. Now that we are familiar with the basic mathematical definition of a matroid, you may be wondering how this relates at all to greedy algorithms. Well, before we explain this connection, we must first discuss a special type of matroid known as a weighted matroid. A weighted matroid consists of u and f, similar to a normal matroid, as well as a weighting function w, which maps between u and the positive reals. Given this weighting function, one problem we may wish to solve could be finding a basis which maximizes the total weight of all its elements. This is known as the maximum weight matroid basis problem, and it can be solved using the following algorithm. First, we define B to be the empty set. We then sort the elements of U in decreasing order of weight. We then iterate through the elements X of U and add the given element X to B if B union X is in F. Lastly, after all this is done, we return B. We can prove that the solution constructed is optimal as follows. First, we must show that we will never need to perform more than one pass over every element in U when deciding whether or not to add it to the basis B. This is simple to prove, as if we were able to add an element that we previously skipped over to our basis, we would violate the hereditary axiom. Second, we now prove that iteratively choosing the highest weight element that can be added to B such that B is still an F produces a maximal weight basis. This follows from a simple proof by contradiction. Assume that there is a basis with higher weight that can result from making a non-optimal local choice. This means that instead of choosing item I over item J, where WI is greater than WJ, we choose item J at this step and continue onwards. Since item I is a valid element, that we can add to our basis, there must be an independent set i in f. The optimal solution s prime with item j is also an independent set by definition. Hence, applying the exchange axiom, we have that we can iteratively add elements from s prime to i until the size of the bases are the same. This means that we add s prime minus 1 elements to the independent set i in total to get s. Since we are iterating in decreasing order of weight, wi is guaranteed to be greater than the weight of the only element which differs between s and s prime. Hence, the total weight of s is greater than that of the optimal basis s prime, resulting in a contradiction. Hence, 
choosing the highest weight element at each iteration is optimal. Analyzing the runtime of this algorithm, we can see that we have to first sort the elements of u, which if we assume u has n elements, means that this step has complexity O of n log n. Afterwards, we have to check if B union x is an f for each x and u. Since there are n elements, we have that the complexity of this step is O of n times f of n, where f of m is a function representing the time it takes to check whether set B, which says m, is an independent set in f. Hence, the overall time complexity is O of n log n plus n times f of n. Altogether, matroids are a broad class of mathematical objects with a lot of rich characteristics which are beyond the scope of this video. I recommend you look into them more closely if this video piqued your interest. In the next video, we will discuss one of the most important applications of the maximum weight matroid basis problem, minimum spanning trees. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.